Welcome to the cool cast where we just chat about gaming stuff. We're going to be talking about Halo, a little bit of Mario Donald going for Congress, and the recent Helldivers 2 patch, which has been amazing, but has caused a lot of controversy. Oh, and they also added mechs, which is pretty sick. And of course, we're going to talk about the Halo TV show as a new episode just went live. And it's just, man, we just need to talk about it. If you like the podcast, make sure to leave a like on the video, comment what you guys want to see next, and let's get right into all those details. First up, we had the Cyber Showdown operation go live for us, and it just kind of was just like a standard operation. Now, now that we've had the Cyber Showdown, we've also had the Spirit of Fire recently come in. We've kind of seen what to expect when it comes to these different types of operations where you get a new free 20 tiers, which is unlocks and things like that. Focus around a different type of armor set. This time we're looking back at the Chimera Core again. And I gotta say, guys, like the customization you have for this, it's it, it, it's customization to say the least, I guess. Like, I just gotta be honest, I'm just not a big fan of the Chimera Core. It just doesn't seem very Halo-like. Honestly, though, when I saw this promotional art, I thought it was hinting at like a new game mode that's been like out of Halo. I thought it was gonna be the Headhunter game mode from Halo Reach put into the game, which I thought would be absolutely amazing to be brought back in Halo Infinite. Again, like stuff like that's not really gonna get like the community super excited. So it would have been just a nice change of pace and just kind of live off of those member barriers of the classic Halo days, which seems like right now that's what the biggest draw to the Halo franchise is, is really just like, hey, remember how good Halo was back in the 2000s? Um, I also had a chance to jump in and play a little bit of the new map Elevation, which I do like this map. It definitely stands out a lot more compared to what we had at launch, which, you know, having this whole like outside low G area is really interesting. And I think it's a nice way to mix up the map play, gameplay a little bit. Uh, I did bring it up in my previous video saying that my only really gripe with it is that like the audio when you go out into space that the audio doesn't change at all. Like we had like in Reach, right? Where if you went out into like an outer space low G area, you hear like this kind of muffled sound effect, even though technically, yeah, there's not supposed to be any sound in space because there's no air to reverberate the audio, but it's a video game, which is roll with it. You know what I mean? I just would like to see some kind of uh, differences when it comes to that, but it, you know, it's a video game. It is what it is. Maybe some audio people were just weren't available at 343 to kind of make put this together. Um, and then also the biggest thing when it comes to what can you actually play, what's the big part of this update that you can actually play within this new operation is the new Husky Raid refresh right here, which came in with six brand new maps, which I covered in a previous video as well. And gotta say like these maps are amazing, like so well forged. These are going to be amazing Husky Raid maps for people to jump in and play like like especially this detail, like the Merchant Square one is just so good. This is Rujaya and it will be coming in later in the operation. They didn't specify when, but uh, for the most part, like, yeah, these are really cool. This map right here, which is Formation, which I love that name. Excellent play off of like not a natural formation, obviously. Uh, it has some AI fighting off in the background, which I pointed out in the previous video on the channel here as well. And I thought that was just a really great touch and a great use of enemy AI within matchmaking, which is just super cool. I'm really glad that they were able to get that to work. And then, well, you know, that's about it. You know, and then you have a bunch of shop updates, which I mean, the shop here, guys, like, yeah, it's it's the shop. I mean, it's it's what's keeping the lights on right now in Halo Infinite. So I get the you know, emphasis on shop items and stuff like that. But, you know, we kind of brought this up in our previous trailer as well when you're showcasing what can you do with the new Cyber Showdown update. It was like, here's a map and Husky would refresh, blah, 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 blah. But then check out all of this customization you can get. And it's like, yeah, like customization isn't a very important part of Halo, but it's not the most important part of Halo. When it comes to these updates, I want to know like what can actually you play with when you go boot up the game. And yeah, the Husky Raid refresh is great, but again, it's like, it's a, it's a niche mode, right? Like I would rather see something either new come to the game or kind of give you something that you can play around with like in a Team Slayer map or something like that. Though previously we did get that big team battle refresh, which was a great addition. The only issue is that like the maps weren't really weighted properly. And so then you, it's kind of hard to find them. Actually talking about maps and weighting, we do know that with the Husky Raid maps, they actually completely removed all the old Husky Raid maps and you can only play the new ones. But don't worry, they will be adding the old ones back into the game on March 19th, which that is a fantastic way to bring in your new maps. I really hope 343 follows through with that type of strategy moving forward because 
when there's new content put into the game, I want to play the new content. And when you have to make me spend just random hours of have it randomly pop up, it just kind of gets frustrating. It makes me not want to hop in and play because I have to just play it for random chance. Like with that recent firefight update, when they brought in a bunch of the other like dev made maps and put them into the game. But I jumped in and tried to make content, wanted to record a video for you guys. And it took me two hours to get like launch site. And I was like, man, okay, well, uh, I don't think a video is happening right now. And 343 added in an elevation 24 seven plays, which that's exactly what you need to do when you bring in new content, make it easy for people to jump in and play around with it. It just seems like sometimes they follow that rule and sometimes they don't. It's really inconsistent. I would just think that when you add new content to the game, make it easy for people to jump in and experience that content and not let it ride on random chance. Talking about new content coming to the game, there is rumblings of a new content update coming into Halo Infinite. This will likely come in after the Yappening as we do know that the Yappening is happening in early April, but after that, we don't really know what's happening with Halo Infinite. Is it going to completely die off in June with the fiscal year rollover for Microsoft? We don't know, but we have heard that they are currently working on a new content update, like the Content 30, Update 30 is what you're going to call it, I guess, or something like that. Real catchy name, but there's been leaks and rumors or just rumblings saying that this content update will bring the networking update with Halo Infinite, which would be an awesome change and update for the game to have it finally function properly. We did bring this up in a previous video on the channel that there are some trade-offs with this new networking model. Some physics might be a little off, but for the most part, like the big thing is that your shots will register properly. Hopefully it'll be less janky movement when you go over like say like the rocks on that plaza remake right now that's in the game. And yeah, this update is gonna be massive for the game, right? It's gonna make it so it runs better when it comes to online experience. But the thing is that like, it's a technicality thing, right? Like you just jump in to play what you've been playing all this time, but this time your shots will register a little bit better. I mean, it's like, it's not that exciting. It's not exactly like a head a catching headline to get people to jump in to play Halo Infinite, right? It's like I get the general public to go like, oh, I should play Halo Infinite now because the networking model has changed. And it's not really that much of a difference, at least from my experience. Like, yeah, I've experienced a little bit of desync, but for the most part, like, Things have worked out rather well for if you have a decent connection. I can see like if you have uh, longer connections with latency or playing in low population areas that it could cause you to have some wonky matches. From what I've also seen is that basically is that they're gonna be copying over the Halo 5 networking model and bringing it over to Halo Infinite. Put that in layman's terms. I'm sure there's plenty of modifications that have been made to it, but for the moment right now, that's kind of the narrative that's going around with this networking model, which could come around with content update 30, which will likely come around in May. Again, 343 is not really tying themselves down to certain dates and timeframes with these content updates. They're kind of following what they're doing with MCC. It's just updating the game when they can and not locking themselves to these three, four month pe periods what they had with previously with seasons, which I mean, it's just, it's tough because like, you get that nice cadence, right? With the seasonal model, right? The people jumping in and go like, oh, there's season four, right? Season five, season six. Like it's a big event. It's a big thing that happens, right? Now we're just getting all these little updates here and there whenever 343 can with these uh, different types of operations, which, you know, are nice little bits of content that kind of keep things a little fresh, a little more consistently. But for the most part, they're not really that exciting. We do know that a squad battle refresh is going to be coming with the game, likely happening with the Yappening operation as well. You've seen plenty of leaks and rumors about Relic coming back into the game in some capacity, either a dev made version or forge made version. Again, we covered it on the channel, like I've said previously, seeing various leaked images out there. So something's in the works with that map coming back, which would be awesome. I would love to have Relic back in the game, especially for all you trolls who like to jump in that Warhog in the beginning of every match on Relic and just drive right into the water. I know you, I've seen you do what you do. It's evil. But yeah, so far this operation model, it's pretty good. Keeps you updated with new content to grind through. You get a free armor set and some content to grind through, but really like the operations really don't feel like the pass is really starting until like what, level 12, right? When you start getting the armor sets, everything else before that's just like emblems, weapon charms, and like, you know, different icons and stuff like that, which is like, eh. It's all right, but I wish it was just something a little bit more. But as 343 has stated, they are moving away from Infinite. So we're going to see the winding down of content. We're going to see less things happening with the game and more community support of these forgers basically carrying the game when it comes to content being put into Halo Infinite. I mean, I'm pretty much expecting the same kind of experience like we have with the end of Halo 5, right? 
where you had you know your main line of content updates i think for that game happened for like a year and a half and then after that it was all just kind of bug fixes some forge maps added in and then we had some really cool like interesting playlists being added in like the mythic playlist right that we had back in halo 5 but it was kind of a blend of halo 5 and halo 2 kind of mixed together in some kind of way and the community really enjoyed that myself included so i'm expecting a similar type of experience with halo infinite now tying back that in with like the emphasis on forge and having forge creations being added into matchmaking we have seen a bunch of leaks when it comes to various very popular forge modes and maps and game modes being added into matchmaking in some capacity. We've seen like the Battle Royale being leaked out, being added into the game. Uh, even like the Silent Cartographer remake that's in currently in the game right at the moment, possibly being put into matchmaking. I would love to have like a four player version of that be able to be played like through matchmaking. That would be absolutely incredible. Basically added in strikes from Destiny, but then putting that into Halo, which would be absolutely awesome. I would love to play that kind of stuff. Some more PVE experiences would be the Fun thing to add, I think, into Halo Infinite at the moment, because we've had PvP since the launch of the game. And right now, for me, I'm just kind of burnt out on PvP. Like, it's Halo Infinite is great. Yeah, the gameplay is awesome. Uh, but I think with the lack of sandbox items being added into the game, uh, the lack of new maps really spicing things up a whole lot when it comes to, especially with the ranked experience, and how the regular quick play Team Slayer experience has really been very stale that... It just needs something new to really get my attention. And I don't really see that happening anytime soon with this game. But if they release like a map pack of Forge made content, kind of like they did with the Husky Raid Refresh, if they had like the, you know, Forerunner uh, Forger map pack for say Team Slayer or, you know, your regular social 4v4 modes, that you can add those into the game as well as like check out these cool new maps we just added into the game that would get people excited that would get the halo community wanting to jump back in and play at least a little bit have its own dedicated playlist or just remove all the old maps for a temporary time and then add the old maps back in like they did with husky raid there's something that could definitely be done there to get people wanting to jump in to play halo but again ultimately it's really just to satiate the current player base uh i don't see the player base getting a second wind uh from the general community or anything like that you would need something huge like a new campaign or an official battle royale which we both know like we've covered on the channel here multiple times not really happening so overall these operation models are pretty good nice little thing the kind of continual flow of content at least for the beginning of this year let's see what happens after the yapping and what's going to happen towards the end of this year as well i mean honestly my opinion guys i'm just gonna throw it out there i think that Full, full live service support for Infinite might end in June, as that's the fiscal year rollover for Microsoft, and that's where Microsoft, you know, adjusts their budgets, reallocates people, moves people around, things like that. So June is a very crucial month for Halo Infinite to see what's going to happen with the future of this game. And if we hear nothing, then likely it'll be like 2025. We might hear like the ending of the live service. We, it's at some point it's going to happen. Like we said, 343 is moving off away from this game. So there is an end date to Infinite. We just don't know when it's going to happen. And I don't really expect to see an end date being mentioned pretty much ever for this game because once you mention that end date, it's going to kill the community. It's going to kill people wanting to jump in and play or spend money, be invested into Halo Infinite because they know that it's going to be ending and everything that you bought into the game, all the time you put into getting good at the game is going to equate for nothing. That 10 year plan, it's not exactly 10 years. I know this might sound like doom and gloom to begin this podcast off, but like, it's just how I, my honest opinions of what's happening with Halo right now. I don't have any insider information, but I just see the writing on the wall. But I'm going to continue to keep playing the game because I love Halo. It's one of my favorite franchises ever, and I want the cool stuff, you know? So, and I also want to keep the skills sharp because, well, I like playing the game, you know? And I'll do live streams on it and stuff like that, but, you know, whatever. Um, next, we got to talk about, guys. This is a little... Halo adjacent, I guess, the way to talk about this next topic. And it's, we're bringing up Marty O'Donnell. Okay, so, yeah, the famous composer for Halo and Destiny. The guy has written some absolutely iconic gaming music, right? One of the most influential gaming developers. You guys can refer to him as a developer, right? Uh, in the gaming sphere, like, in history, really. Like, everyone knows the Halo theme. A lot of people love the music that he created for Destiny. Like there was that TikTok challenge, right? Of people singing the Halo theme. And it was like a viral thing that was going around because people loved the music so much. Well, Marty, uh, you know, he's been running into issues recently, a lot of legal issues, especially with Destiny and Bungie and things like that. Um, and now apparently he is uh, trying out new things 
Uh, he's running for Congress in Nevada, which I thought was just it's it's an odd thing to see happen. But I mean, nothing against them. I mean, like, yeah, if you want to run, go for it, dude. Like if you feel like you can make a change. Um, the thing is that like, OK, this might not to get too political on this podcast, guys, because, you know, we're here for gaming. Right. But this is a gaming adjacent thing. And it's just it's so weird. I just feel like I had to talk about it is that like, yeah, he's running as a Republican, which to me, from the years of following Marty through on Twitter, on his social media and things like that. I'm like, yeah, I kind of saw that coming, you know, and he says like he's a Trump guy, you know, not exactly a MAGA, but, you know, he's uh, he definitely leans that way for sure. Um, he actually recently had an interview on Fox News, which was like, OK, this is just what dimension am I living in right now where I'm seeing this? But what timeline is this? Is this the wrong timeline. Are we in the bad place right now? Um, but like it was just real fluff. More just kind of like, hey, I'm running for Congress in Nevada. And he is, uh, you know, doing that. He doesn't really have any qualifications as he's a music composer. Right. But I mean, you don't need to really have qualifications to be a run for Congress as long as you just, you know, represent the people of your area properly. That's all you're really meant to do. You know, more power to him for that. But just like, dude, like Marty O'Donnell's running for Congress. I just, uh, oh no. And, you know, just seeing him run as a Republican, I'm just like, of course you would, dude. <laughs> but like, and we'll see. We'll keep an eye on it. If he wins, that would just be wild. Maybe he can run on the platform of make Halo great again. All right, next we got to talk about the Halo TV show, right? There's a new episode that comes out every week and it sparks up some more controversy generally with this show. But honestly, guys, I actually haven't watched the last episode. I've watched reviews on it, right? Like it shows more showcases more of the Spartan 3s. Uh, Corporal Perez becomes like a Spartan 3. Like we, I think we saw that in the trailers as well. Kai is looking to lead the Spartan 3 charge and as Ackerson is the guy kind of pulling the strings behind everything and stuff like that, which, you know, is an interesting point to bring up. But the thing is that like, dude, this Halo show, this season has been such whiplash and I just like, it's made me lose all interest within this series right now. Uh, just because like you'll have one moment be like, dude, that was awesome. That's great. And then like literally the next scene, you'd be like, what are you doing? Like that doesn't make any sense or it's something that's completely uninteresting or something that we just don't care about as viewers. Right. And I just feel like the people who run this show just don't understand what Halo is. They see a guy in big green power armor shooting aliens and they're like, OK, that's the main character. Right. Like, well, yeah, Master Chief is the main character, but. He's not really that much of a character to be real. Like the reason why the Halo story works so well is because the cast around Master Chief within the games are really like helping push Chief in the narrative or helping have Chief different types of realizations and revelations and things like that. Like Chief is just there to shoot aliens and say zippy one liners. I mean, he's supposed to be like the badass, but I feel like they took like your typical type of like story arc that you see with fallen heroes in a way and applied it to this season. And it just like doesn't really feel like Halo. Like it, and also like the entirety of the fall of reach that happened basically in one episode, which I would think would be the entire season worth of something, you know, but uh, it wasn't. It was just one episode and it all happened off screen where you see Chief fighting in the entirety of the fall of reach not in his armor set because Ackerson stole the armor set from the Spartan 2s for whatever reason. I'm assuming it's so then the Spartan 3s could be like his Spartans and, you know, stuff like that. But then it just kind of feels like I'm just watching like a semi sci-fi military drama, really. Not even action. It's just more drama. I would say that this season has done a better job of giving supporting characters a more purpose within the story, especially Riz. So we saw her story arc. Uh, we saw Vanix, you know, we have a little bit more personality, which was kind of nice, but then he got killed off. Riz ends up just going to be a minor, I guess, live a normal life. Literally the entire story arc with Soren is just completely boring. Don't care really at all. And then you just have Chief without his armor since episode three. So half of the season that we've seen so far, Chief hasn't even had armor. That was like the biggest criticism of the Halo show back in season one. It was like, stop taking off your helmet. At least he had his armor. And then <laughs> I think the showrunners were just like, oh, okay, well, you don't like that? Fine, no armor at all then. Like the reason why we want to see Chief in the armor, because that's the character. That's what he looks like. I want to see Chief and armor doing badass things against aliens like that would have been awesome like they totally had an awesome opportunity within the fall of reach episode where like yeah i can understand like being caught off guard outside of your armor set that's totally fine but then like once he gets back into unsc command base 
then you get the armor on and you're like, okay, let's kick some ass, trick, trick, you know, like that would have been absolutely awesome. You could still lose reach and have Chief do some awesome thing, like win an awesome battle, but still lose the war, you know what I mean? And instead, we just see Chief just like without his armor at all and it just doesn't really feel like i'm watching a halo show it just feels like i'm watching like a sci-fi drama it's like they just want to try to break chief down to what you know he absolutely is i guess like to the core of his person rather than just being a badass who has one liars and does cool things we've seen plenty of examples of this within media right uh the oldest one being like terminator i think terminator would have been a perfect example of what to follow when it comes to being master chief right like in terminator 2 like arnold schwarzenegger's character he is like the main character right but like the supporting cast around him are really the characters are pushing the narrative forward and the terminators just there to go uh i'll be back or you know hasta la vista and shoot things and recently we saw this with a mandalorian as well right didn't have his helmet on the entire season until the very last episode it made it a big deal because that you know was revealed at the end and also the supporting cast around the mandalorian is really what pushes the narrative forward where mando is just supposed to be just like the vessel for the viewer to then experience the world that they're in with chief in the tv show it's more like we're watching chief experience the world of halo if you know what i mean like it's it's different man and it just doesn't really bring you in there's no audience connection it seems like in the last episode they'll go on to a halo ring as the last episode's titled halo but you know we'll just wait and see what kind of weird stuff happens and see how mckee came back to life because that is just weird i'm just finding it really tough to be invested with this season just because it seems like when anything cool happens or anything good that happens with the show immediately i mean immediately afterwards something just makes you scratch your hand like what were you thinking i'll keep an eye on it if anything weird happens or anything good actually happens with the show i'll definitely share with you guys here on the channel but uh the right now the halo show is like probably my lowest interest i've ever had in it in some more halo adjacent news uh the developers of the red versus blue series have just announced that they are closing shop after 20 plus years of working together which is so tragic man but and they're an iconic part of the halo story of the community because they are the ones that basically forged forward when it came to machinima right making movies with video games the red versus blue series was mind-blowing at the time right i remember when i first watched the first episode of red versus blue i was like how the heck did they even record this and do this and make it look good? And then Red vs. Blue blew up so much that they were able to branch out to try out different things with new series and different types of content like the Achievement Hunter series that was massive when it came to that back in the 2010s, right? But myself and I think many people included within the Halo community kind of just like withered away from Rooster Teeth as... Some aspects of Red vs. Blue kind of changed and kind of became more than just like Machinima. It became more of like an animated series, really. But yeah, Warner Brothers shut them down because of financial reasons. And, you know, it's I guess it's understandable, right? Like, you know, they had a ton of, they were getting tons of views back in the 2010s. But recently, uh, it's been kind of a bit of a struggle for them. And, you know, this is kind of one of those ups and downs things where... I feel like it maybe is one of those things where like if you evolve too much from your original vision of what like the studio was going to be, then I can see like losing your core audience and trying to exp when you're trying to expand out to other things or not going with the times and kind of continuing on with what worked in the past might not work in the future or people just maybe get tired of a series, you know, and I think that's what kind of happened with Rooster Teeth here. You know, back in the day, they were pulling in tons of views, millions of views, and now not as much. But yeah, this kind of stuff happens all the time within the entertainment industry. I just hope that people part of Rooster Teeth are able to find something to do after, you know, some, be able to get back up on their feet soon afterwards. Really quite an amazing position that they were in, be able to just start something from the ground up and then really make something unique and awesome. And the final season of Red vs. Blue will actually kind of navigate the closure together when it comes to the shutdown of Rooster Teeth. But yeah, best of luck to those people moving forward, though. Now, I'm sure you guys probably tune into this podcast to be more of a Halo show, if you will, which... Totally get that, totally understandable, but there is this game that I've been playing, and it's been amazing, and I really need to talk about it, and it's Helldivers 2. You've seen me put a couple of videos up here on the channel, on the YouTube channel here, and guys, like, if you haven't played Helldivers 2, if you're waiting on it to see if it really is good, trust me, it's good. It's just pure fun. That's what it is. It feels like a game that's meant to be a game, in a way. Even the CEO of the studio, Arrowhead, for Helldivers 2, stated that a game for everyone isn't for everyone. And that's exactly what Helldivers 2 does. It knows what it is, it goes for it all the way, and it accomplishes it so well. 
in the recent update, there was a patch update that came with the game, which we covered here on the channel. And it seemed like a fair update where it, you know, nerfed a bit of the obvious meta choices and buffed some of the lesser used things within the game. But the community, oh my God, dude, like the community has been flipping out about this. Well, I shouldn't say the community at large. It's more a very vocal, very, very vocal minority have been very hateful towards the developers because basically they nerfed their favorite toy. And, you know, the Hell Devers devs I talked about in my video on YouTube talked about this where it was like, yeah, we get that, like, you know, nerfing your favorite toy or learning the skill set that use that item sucks to see it get nerfed and not be as useful. But when those things are the obvious choice to run, it ruins the sandbox when you have all these different options. And you're like, no, I'm just going to run these five things like, no, th that doesn't that doesn't work. That's not good gameplay. I just don't understand, like the mentality behind people who like genuinely get mad when an item within their game that they like gets nerfed. Like you roll with it, man. Like the reason why you're the part of the reason why you're only using that thing is because it's clearly the best option and it overshadows everything else, which is not good game design. So the Hell Divers community has kind of gone off on some of the developers and even one of the developers clapped back a little bit and it definitely blew up in their face. So much so the CEO even publicly stated that they are going through a company-wide training of how to communicate with the community. So what was so bad that needed company-wide training that somebody said? Basically, a person replied on Discord saying, man, and watching you all cry amuses me so much which yeah a little tone deaf when it comes to the response to that kind of stuff but it is kind of funny seeing people you know throw tantrums online because of just like your favorite weapon got a little bit of a nerve it's still effective it's just not as good as it once was there's just something about this newer generation of gamers that it just like it just so shocks me maybe it's just like the again like a vocal minority or something like that but it seems like death threats to developers are so common nowadays and you know doxing them and just being actual just terrible people to people who just make video games and it's like dude like if you're that's mad about like updates and changes like i think you just need something a little bit more in your life i'm sorry but like i'm just gonna keep it real with you guys like you can't be acting like that to people because of their decisions of how they want their game to be played. It's just, it's, it's wild, dude. It's just wild. When you're in these type of situations as a development team, you can't respond to your community like that. It's just not how it works. You gotta kind of just roll with the punches, right? And just take their feedback, how crass and terrible it might be and how they deliver it. You still gotta find the root cause of what's causing this issue. And then you can respond back like, we hear you. We're taking in your feedback. We'll let you know when they, you know when uh, an update happens. Like that's the proper response to these type of situations. You're not punching people while they're down, which is kind of what that comment was about. A really cool thing that came with this patch though is environmental hazards. They brought in meteor showers into the game, which I played a bit of. And yeah, I did get rocked by a meteor shower. There was even one where I was jumping onto the exfil ship, like about to leave. A meteor lands directly on me through the ship, kills me as I'm like stepping on to the ship like in the animation and then the rest of my team flies off i can't believe stuff like that happened up, get him. Oh, no. a meteor landed right on me as soon as i got in i'm not sure if i got out <laughs> oh my gosh i saw two death icons <laughs> oh please tell me it counts as me getting extracted i failed to extract god damn it no wait the meteor hit you as you were getting in yeah so i was like in the animation of getting onto oh. those and then a meteor lands on my head dude no. But that's one of those things where you just have like just hilarious moments within the game where like something like that, like said that if that happened like in a multiplayer Halo game, that would absolutely piss me off, right? Like that'd be so stupid to add that in. But if you add it into Helldivers, it makes it a really fun, chaotic experience and just adds in like these random hilarious moments. I would love to see what else they add in when it comes to environmental experiences, maybe more like weather, maybe some more types of hazards or things like that added into the game. It just be it just be fun. Like it's like it's one of those things as a held ever. Like you're kind of meant to die and hopefully not die too much, but it's kind of part of the comedy of the game, which I really enjoy. But if you've been playing Helldivers 2 or keeping an eye on the social media or the news going around the game, they added in an exosuit into the game. By liberation of Tian Quan, the entire community rallied behind and defeated the automatons on the planet to liberate it within 24 hours to then save the technology to then be able to use it, which unlocked it for the community. That was just such a cool event. Like, yeah, it was kind of one of those things that you probably scaled it where it was just going to happen anyways, or it was going to be unlocked in some kind of way. 
but it's just cool to like know that like you did your part right which is kind of again playing off of that meme from starship troopers which i guess game is basically starship troopers the video game which has been hilarious i love this game and then the mech suit is insane now like this has a rocket launcher and a machine gun on it and you have two uses for it and it has a 600 second cooldown but the crazy thing about this is that it is super powerful you can i've seen people take out a bio titan within three rockets which is insane the item really does like pack a punch it is a game changer of a moment but it does seem like the ammo count might be a little low or maybe it's just that it's too good at killing things because so many times when you're jumping into the mech suit the exo suit that you might actually run out of ammo and once that happens you're kind of just like standing around like oh what do i do then so if you're smart with the exo suit you can definitely do a, a lot of damage but again if you're not so smart i've seen people get one hit by charger so there's some trade-offs with it at the moment it'd be crazy to see like what could happen with it i would like to see if there's like some type of melee experience with the exo suit though kind of like we see like remember with like the mantis from halo 4 right had like that stomp mechanic that would have been cool to see kind of brought in with that mech suit as well. It does seem like you do deal damage by just walking into things, but it's not really that much. Definitely not like a, no, it's definitely not damage that you're meant to really deal. You don't expect to run through a hive and just kill everything in the way. Well, there are some trade-offs with it. I uh, definitely need to jump in and actually play around with it, but I've done my research and seen what it looks like, and it looks really freaking awesome. I am currently working on a video that explains the Galactic War. I found some information online about it, and I wanted to kind of detail it all in a video for you guys. There's some really interesting mechanics, like a regen mechanic for planets, and also resupply chains, which we'll definitely have to touch on. But yeah, to be honest, guys, like Helldivers 2 has my full attention. Like, I was playing a lot of Call of Duty. I was playing a lot of halo i was playing some hogwarts legacy on the side as well just kind of get my rpg fix done and once held ever Sue came out dude like i've just been playing this like it's it's too much fun i did see some comments talking about people like oh i wish i could play this on xbox like it is available on pc if you have a capable pc obviously this, this game is a bit resource intensive so keep that in mind if you're looking to buy into the game it's also just 40 bucks you know it's almost half the price of a normal 70 dollar game nowadays so if you're on the fence i'd say just jump in and play it i don't really see this game going on sale too drastically like maybe if a steam sale happens you might see like 20% off or something so you save like maybe 10 bucks or something like that at best but since it's like a multiplayer game relies on a community to be in the game it is a bit of a live service but like done correctly <laughs> the monetization of the game isn't so egregious like you can get like a whole armor set for like two bucks like that's nothing really compared to like what we have with infinite with like a single armor set being like 20 bucks like yeah that's a lot basically what i'm saying is that arrowhead's going to need that revenue flow coming in meaning that i don't really see this going on sale drastically it's not like a titanfall 2 right where you see that go on sale for like two bucks sometimes because yeah mainly people kind of just jump on are gonna be playing the multiplayer the, the online servers are not really being supported anymore and so you see stuff like that go on sale but for helldivers i don't really see that happening back onto the topic of halo usually when i do these podcasts i will do like a quick look q a like oh what's your favorite thing of this and that but since we're kind of rolling solo for this podcast episode i wanted to get something out for you guys i know you guys have been fans of the show so far which i really appreciate the support this fun bit of information is about the mission the covenant from halo 3's campaign and i just blew my mind of how resourceful the developers were back in halo 3 back in the 360 days especially uh, rejected shotgun recently highlighted this about the uh the map saying that i can't keep this knowledge to myself anymore every single rock on the covenant is the same rock everyone all of them there was one single rock on the covenant not two not three just one it's just one rock rotated scaled and moved around and when you check out the images like oh my god you're right they all look the exact same they're just scaled up differently which i find absolutely hilarious and actually like ingenious right because i never even noticed that when it comes to playing so i thought they were all like individual types of rocks but no it's all the same rock it's literally just this rock and it's just scaled up differently which i find just absolutely hilarious how's that to all the people who like to complain about reused assets and sequels of games like i can remember there being a big deal when it came to spider-man reusing some of the web animations it's like yeah because they spent more time in building out the world and creating new things rather than reworking animations that already worked i remember show remember someone got upset about like a god of war animation between four and ragnarok that it was the same like animation of climbing into a boat but like why does that animation need to change just for the sake of change no spend that dev time 
making cool new things rather than reinventing the wheel. And this rock right here from Halo 3, I think is a perfect example of just taking advantage and utilizing assets to their full potential. So if you guys enjoyed this solo run when it comes to the podcast, I'll find a guest for the next episode as well, but I wanted to give something out. It's been too long since the last podcast episode. Leave a comment down below who you guys would like to see next when it comes to the next podcast. And do you like a little bit of variety when it comes to the podcast as well? Talking about general gaming news rather than just specifically Halo things? Like we're always going to be talking about Halo because I love the franchise so much. It's like part of my DNA. But I just kind of want, you know, I play other things and I find stuff out there really interesting to talk about. So thank you all for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.